Hi, welcome back to Box of Delights. Today, I want to show you a game called The Cousin's War. This is a game designed by David Mortimer, someone you've seen before on the channel. I've shown you his game, uh, Microfilms, and I've also got another game of his called Flock, which I really should show you sometime. This one's published by Surprise Stare, a collaboration between Alan Paul and Tony Boydell. Dave Mortimer is getting quite a reputation for designing these small games with great little themes. This one is about the Wars of the Roses, a fascinating period of English history. This one's strictly a two-player game. I'm going to open this up and show you how it plays. I really love the artwork. Who did the artwork on this one? Uh, credit goes to Clemens Franz. This might be the first of a series of, of these types of games from um, Dave Mortimer and potentially collaborating with other designers as well. It's got some cards in here. Incidentally, there was a promo. Here it is. There's a couple of promos in here. We've got promos for Guilds of London, a series I've just finished, and Supply Wagon Snowdonia, both Tony Boydell designs. All right, let's get this one set up and we'll show you how this plays. This is a game of five rounds and England is divided into three regions. The objective is to gain control of England, which can be achieved in one of three ways. If at the end of any round you control all three regions, then you win. At the end of round five, whoever controls the most regions, so best out of three, wins. If no player controls the most regions at the end, then it's the player who's won the most battles, and we'll see how that works as I demonstrate gameplay. Controlling a region means having the most cubes in a, in a region, white for York, red for Lancaster. We start the game at round one. There's a player aid to give us a summary of a round and a summary of rules. There's a supply of white and red cubes and also two French cubes. These are quite key and an interesting part of the game. You can win the allegiance of the French and get these additional blue cubes. This is done with these action cards. We've got French allies. We'll show what that means as we get into play. I've actually missed a vital part of setup here. Forgive me, uh, but it's not going to be here for the rest of the, the video. At the start of the game, each region gets one cube of each colour, so don't forget to do that. It's not going to make a great deal of difference to the rest of the video, but that's an important part of setup. Uh, and potentially, you could be you know, moving things around or trying to remove cubes of your opponents gain control, but set up one cube in each region. Each player takes two cubes each, York and Lancaster, and we shuffle the action cards and we'll deal a hand of six each. These set aside cards are going to be used in subsequent rounds. Both players will now pick a card from their hand and they're going to pass it to their opponent. Let's just do this randomly for the demo. There's two types of cards in your hand. You're going to have battlefield cards, like these, and event cards. Okay. Battle cards is the name of the battle. We have battle icon here, we've got the date of the battle, uh, starting cubes on battlefield, we'll talk about it in a second, and the battle region. Okay. This is one in this region. Each player is going to start the round by choosing a battlefield if they can. Let's go for Wakefield. Then for Lancaster. Um, if you don't have a uh, battle card, we do, there's only one here to choose from, but if we didn't have one then you can play one of these event cards. These are flipped and the battlefield with the lowest date is going to be the battle that's going to be used this round. Okay, so this is this one is February 1461, this one is December 1460, so we're in Wakefield. This card was played by York, so we face it this way, the bottom of the card facing York. This goes to a discard pile. 
This card shows us that one Lancastrian army is, or troop is placed on this card. This can come from their reserve or the supply. As the player who played the battlefield, they get to choose first one of their cards. Uh, we're going to play four cards each round. We're going to leave one in our hand for next round. Event cards are interesting. They have a primary effect here which we can play. So, uh, the Earl of Northumberland says, I may add one or two cubes to the north region from my reserve. I could place these two in the north region. Okay, and what's interesting, kind of Twilight Struggle-esque, is there's a secondary effect here that if we play this event for its primary, the opponent can play the secondary event if, and only if, uh, there's a thick black box, uh, thick blocks around the round we're in. This one would be round two, not round one, so that doesn't allow the opponent to play this. Or the opponent's rows, in this case Lancaster, is in the round we're in. So the opponent could play this one in rounds two or rounds four if they were Lancaster. Okay? If this one was played by Lancaster, then York could play this part in rounds three or five. Okay? So let's play this event. It doesn't give anything to my opponent because we're in round one. This goes to the discard pile. Lancaster's turn. And what's interesting here is we're playing cues to the the region, remember we're trying to control regions, but there's also a battlefield, the Battle of Wakefield here. We're both going to be playing cubes to the battlefield and trying to win this battle. And the outcome of the battle means we get to place cubes in the region. Okay, So winning the battle means we may be able to steal control of the region. In the moment, York controls the north region. Yeah, I don't really want to play French allies just yet. Overwinning ambition, we could, it says, if your opponent controls the most regions, they do at the moment, we could take one of their cubes and return it to the supply. That kind of undoes the effect here. Um, but they get to add one to the battlefield. Uh, take any number of cubes from a non-battle region and put it back into the supply. That doesn't help us because the battle region is here. Add to the battlefield one cube from the supply. Uh, I like this one or move one or two of your cues from the battlefield to the battle region. So I could move this from here to here and they can move. It says move up to two of their cubes from the battle region to the battlefield. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to do this one. Hurried reinforcements. It's difficult this because um, you can't not play a card. So one of these cards is you know, we, we, we've got to play some of these. It's, it's just a question of the order you play them. So let's play this one first and see what happens. Add to the battlefield one cube from the supply or, and nor or one cube from the reserve. Uh, so let's, let's do that. Let's take one from the supply and one from our reserve. So we're certainly winning the battle at the moment. And now it says opponent... York may, but there's no square or York rows on round number one, so that's not going to do anything. Okay, back to the Yorkists. Now, we've got an event here, but we've also got a couple of cards that can potentially help us. I might save one of these, possibly this one. Yeah, sometimes these games can... can finish quite quickly. Let's try let's try this one. Ludford Bridge. I don't really want to keep hold of this. I can play a battlefield card and on a battlefield card there's no event but in the top right here is a command point. Different cards have different numbers of command points. Three, two, one. Okay. Now command points allow us to do certain things. We can use command points to move troops from the supply to the reserve, move troops from the reserve to the battlefield, move influence, achieve one of the three regions and for one command point you can move one cube into a selected region. Okay, So if I had two command points I could say choose the middle region, move two cubes in. If you choose the middle region you can move two like this. Okay. Um, I can't choose Barnet because there's no adjacent 
cubes, but I could potentially move one down here like this and control two regions now. Okay, so you can see that you could potentially be winning the game on one round. Okay, Lancastrians, let's see. We don't have to play the event, you can just use the command points. And I think we'll play... Home, home. Let's play this event. Move one or two of your cubes from the battlefield to the battle region. We'll do that. I've got two more cards to play. I want to get some cubes from the reserve, I think. For two command points, I could add two white cubes from the supply to my reserve. If I've got cubes in my reserve, I can do two things with them. I could, on my next turn, play two command points and get those two on the battlefield. All right. So I might, um, yeah, why don't we just do that? Let's, let's play that. All right, Lancastrians might go for a more risky strategy. Yeah, let's play overwhelming ambition. All right, but using it for its command points. I, mean, I could do this, but for two control points, I could take two from my reserve, add them to the battlefield. I've only got one in my reserve. I could move stuff around. That's um, only going to use one control point. I could attempt to add this straight to the board. Remember, none of my other events are really helping me. Uh, but this is a bit of a risky, a risky play. First, we take um, one of our cubes from our reserve and we place it in the target region. Let's say the central region is our target. Then we roll a die. If the number we roll is greater than the number of cubes we have in the region, there's only one, then we've been successful. Equal or lower, then the cube is returned to our reserve. Okay? So, we've got two attempts at this because we've played two command points. So if I rolled a one, it would be a fail. But I've got two attempts. I've got two command points so I can try twice. Okay? And I can roll again and if I'm successful it stays there. Okay? That's placing influence. The other thing I could do is remove influence. Again, I've, got, I've played two command points, so I've got two attempts at this. First, I name the target region. Let's name the central region. And then I roll the die. If the number is less than the number of cubes in the region, then we've been successful, and we put a cube in the supply. If equal, so we rolled a one, there's one here, then the cube, we've not failed, it was successful, but it doesn't go back to supply, it goes to the reserve. Higher than that number, the attempt fails. If we succeed, we succeeded on our first roll, that goes to the reserve because it was equal. The second command point's wasted. All right? we only, we're only trying to remove one uh, opponent's influence. Okay, as it goes. I don't want to do either of those things. I've got two command points. Remember, we can do any number of things with those command points. I'm going to choose to gain some troops from the reserve. So two command points, two troops from the reserve. Now the downside to this card, doesn't matter if we play it for its event or its command points, there's a square in round number one, we're in round number one. Opponent, or York, our opponent is York, our opponent can add one of their cubes to the battlefield from the supply. So yeah, some cards work against us, there's nothing we can do about it, we have to play cards. Right, they've got a card on the battlefield now. And now it's York, it's their final card, one of these two cards. We've got two command points, three command points, or an event here. Add naught or one cube to each region from my reserve. Okay, and normally, obviously, when you're adding troops to the battlefield, they're going here. Adding troops with command points is risky, you're rolling the dice to make, you know, to choose whether it's effective or not. And only one cube can be added in each region. With the event, obviously, it's a guaranteed success. Yeah, or we can just add two to the battlefield. I could use this card here, add these two to the battlefield. I think it's what we're going to do. Two command points means we can add two troops from the reserve to the battlefield. Looking pretty good for York right now. Okay, Lancaster's got two cards left. Uh, we can neutralise with French allies. 
and we can add the two blue French to our side of the battlefield but it gives me our opponent add one cube to the north region from the supply or the reserve so they would get to add one up here or we could just use it for its two command points. I think that's what we're going to do. Two command points and put two on the battlefield. So it's three versus three. That's it. We've now completed the fourth phase. Okay. We've played our action cards. We've got one left each for the next round. Now we resolve the battle. We're just going to continue until one player is the only player with cubes remaining. Uh, the starting player, we're going to take turns, all right, there's being the active player. The first player to be active player is going to be the player with the most influence in that region. We're in the north, and Castrians have the most influence, it's two versus one, so red is acting first. If there was a tie here, then whoever played the battle card would go first. Now, this is going to be a little bit of... Um, secret play here. What we're going to do is we're going to roll three dice. Right? Active player rolls three dice. Secretly oh, nice. One, one, two. The War of the Roses was a war of deceit and intrigue. We're playing a game of liar's dice effectively to reflect that. I've got two ones, that's quite a nice roll. Okay, But I can declare anything. I might say oh, I've rolled two sixes or two threes or 1-5, or I might actually say, I've rolled three ones, okay, triple one. The opponent has a choice now. Do they accept that declaration or challenge that declaration? If they accept the declaration, right, I think you're telling the truth. The opponent is given the dice, all right? That declaration is never revealed to be true or false. But they've got to roll them and beat that triple one, okay? 3-3-2. Three, three, That's a fail. Right? We failed to beat that triple. A triple always beats a double, a double always beats a single. If we'd rolled triple threes, triple threes are better than triple one, we'd have won. So with triple threes, the loser must discard one cube. Okay? If a triple beats a double, they discard two cubes. If a triple beats a single, they discard three cubes. As it goes, what did we get? It was 3-3-2. Three, three, we would lose a triple beats, a double, we would lose two cubes. But we could save ourselves a little bit here. We can use command points from our hand. We've got three command points in our hand still. That one card is like our joker. We can use it now to save ourselves from losing two, or we can keep it for a later round. We can adjust with three command points, three dice, up or down one point. So. I could potentially adjust those two downwards to uh, make that a triple two. Or, even better, I could just use one of those command points to move that one up to a three, a triple three. All right? You can't adjust the same dice twice, but three, with three pips you can adjust three dice. All right, let's do that. We spent our three command points our opponent has lost a cube back to the supply. Now the downside obviously is we spent our card. They've still got one in their hand. All right, let's roll, let's roll. Let's see, we've got three versus two. We roll secretly. I'm gonna declare double five. Let's say they challenge and say, well, I don't believe you. And I reveal it, then my opponent immediately loses a cube. If the declaration was false, let's say I said double five and I actually only had double one, they lose a cube and our opponent gets to roll and beat, try to beat that false declaration, right? what they actually rolled, okay? in this case double one. All right, so as it stands, we rolled um, double five, it was declared, it was challenged as false, it was true, we, the challenger loses a cube for challenging wrongly, and now they've still got to roll and try and beat it. So we've got to try and beat double five still, and we've got six, four, three, that's no good, we're going to lose our final cube. So Instead, this time the two points isn't going to help us because remember we can only adjust one die up one. So we could make we could make a double four, three to a four. If we had um, 
you can't adjust the same die twice. If we had double five though, let's say we had double five. Now we've got a draw. Right, so this would mean nothing happens, right? Everyone's a draw, active player changes, we start again. But with two points now, I could turn this, I could adjust these two upwards into two sixes. Double six beats double five, our opponent loses a cube instead. Okay? Alright, act two v one, active player is now here. No one's got any cubes now, so it's all down, well, it's cards now, so it's all down to the dice. We roll, we got a single five, we can call it, um, you know, we can, we can bluff, let's say we say, we call it a double three. Our challenger believes us, rolls, gets a four, two, one. They do this openly, lose a cube. Uh, it was a single against a double. Oh, you lose two cubes, two cubes, because they declared a, a double. Uh, we only rolled a single. And the Lancastrians ended up winning the battle. Finally then, the cubes from the battle get placed on the map or back in the reserve. Now they can, if there's more, more than one cube here, they can divide between the reserve and the map, but it can only ever be one region on the map, and the region is either the battlefield region or an adjacent region. So let's place here. The card, the battle where the battle took place, this goes to the, the victorious leader. So the player wins the Battle of Wakefield and keeps this in reserve. Remember I told you if it gets to the end of the game and no player controls the most regions, like right now if we were in round five, we've got red controlling one region but you know, potentially it could be a draw, then it comes down to the number of battles that they've won. Right? So keep these in reserve. This is the number of battles you've won. And that's it. We move into round two. We're going to deal up a new hand. We get to shuffle these two together. You could potentially be holding cards from this round because you didn't play them during the battle. And a new round begins. And the first one we do is we deal six action cards and play again. So it's an interesting little game. I mean, it says on the box uh, 30 minutes, 12 plus, two player. And obviously every hand you get is going to determine how you're going to play, which regions do you want the battles to, to happen in, which opponent effects are potentially going to hit. So we're in round two now, so I've got this card, uh, this one's safe but potentially our opponent's going to be able to add a cube to any single region from their reserve, all right? So I'm giving away my opponent's effects. How you use these cards, when you use these cards, how you time them, there's a heck of a lot of game. In a game that only has three regions, a bunch of cubes and 17 action cards, there's a lot going on and a lot of strategy, a lot of you know, decisions to be made. Just fighting over these little regions, you can see immediately you know, this struggle to control England using just three regions, <laughs> it's inspired. I really, really like it. Um, the fact that you know there's a different number of cards. This battle's now done. The Battle of Wakefield's concluded. We're not going to see that again. That's been taken out of the game as a as a victory card. All right. So what have we got now? We can choose. We can choose St Albans or Barnet. And remember, some of these are going to be favouring. The Yorkists, some of them are going to be favouring the Lancastrians, some neither. And the other exciting thing is that this game could finish in round one, two, three, four, or five. It could go all the way. It depends how closely matched our players are. A fabulous little game in a little box. Lots and lots of strategy going on. Great value, great design, great production. You can't go wrong with the Cousins War. Thank you for watching. See you next time.